What we're gonna do on this episode of Engine Masters is find out how intake manifold plenum volume affects performance. Now, this whole thing was conceived, built, and engineered by our buddy Richard Holdner. You remember him from some past episodes. I think there is no guy I know who is more dedicated to intake manifold science than Richard is. And he follows it a lot, he studies it a lot, and the thing that he has seen is that guys on the internet make some general statements about plenum volume. They'll say things like, oh, if you're gonna run lots of boost or lots of displacement or big RPM, you gotta have bigger plenum volume. And of course, the inverse would be true. Smaller engines, less RPM, less boost, smaller plenum volume. Is that actually true? That's what we're gonna find out. And this is what Richard built for us in order to do that. This is a bone stock GM truck 6.2 liter. It's got a little camshaft in it. Aftermarket deal, 227 at 50. That's not a lot of duration. It's a pretty tame camshaft. It's also got headers on it and the Holly high ram intake manifold. And of course, the Holy FI is gonna be controlled by Holly. So this is really rudimentary. And the thing that is gonna shock us is we're gonna hang it on the dyno and it's gonna make like 575 horsepower. And that's with this straight out of the box high ram on it. But the thing you see people do all of the time is like build little spacers between the lid and the runners and adjust plenum volume a little bit. Does it matter? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. And we're gonna do it by first running it bone stock or the intake manifold bone stock. And then we're going ridiculously mega overkill. You'll see what Richard built for us. That's when the episode is gonna get really fun. But first, we're gonna put this on the dyno in as is configuration and make some pretty stinky power for such a tame engine. So that's the second value you're gonna get out of this episode is learning what you can do with just Junkyard LS power, as if you haven't already seen it. Here we go. You know what the greatest thing is about this episode? Tell me. Blame Holdner for everything. It's all his fault. He's I can tell not you right here. Every it's his time. idea, his motor, his tune-up. We just get to criticize. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. every time. Holdner just <laughs> blows it. He makes some mistakes. He leaves out the details. Well, actually, it's, it's pretty good. It's going to be pretty yeah, good. I, I think it's going to be I'm good. I'm thinking, where are you going with this? Because I think the whole thing is really cool. I well, think so, too. The whole concept here is plenum volume test. Yeah. 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 Simple and, test. And uh, carburation erased from the picture. Which yeah. this would be virtually impossible to do with a carburetor. This no, is the EFI no, only it just it would have no signal. But Richard Nish took some time and got the Holly all tuned up, so it made it again easy for us. Roll it yep. in, plug it in. And, ooh, we get to push the handle and see the results and talk about it. I'm super yeah. curious about this because on a factory Dodge Magnum, they had an intake manifold called the beer barrel, uh -huh. and the guys on the internet say the plenum volume is too big, and they stuff like two by fours and all kinds of stuff in there with, you know, two spray, by fours? spray in place Not foam. even the popsicle stick. Yeah. Straight to the two by four. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. one by twos, you know, wedged and bolted to the sides of the plenum on tunnel ramps and stuffed and changed, and I've seen it too. So I was, wow. I, I was working on a highly modified beer barrel intake, and I didn't know whether to believe the internet or believe, you know, that the Chrysler engineers knew what they were doing. Yeah. But we will definitively know which direction things go after this test. Just like we did with the intake runner length test before that you missed out on, we're gonna uh, do wild extremes of plenum volume and see what happens. So what we have here is, I guess, just the regular old poly high ram on a 6.2. Okay, ready to go. A cam trip. Easy. Okay, fire it up. That's a lot of horsepower. And that is a stout motor for nothing but a cam and intake and headers. Yeah, that's an LS for you. Old muscle car stuff is turds compared to LS motors, aren't they? Except big punch Chevys. Except big punch Chevys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, simple as that. Here's what we've got. 572 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, 476 pound-feet of torque at 5,500, which is really impressive for a stock 6.2 with a cam. Arguably an intake manifold that's completely wrong for the combination and headers. Do that with your 383 small block that's Chevy. That's kind of crushing, actually. I know. <laughs> Compared yeah. to the dinosaur stuff that we deal with, yeah. that's crushing. 